एक्सेप्टेडीज and whose sinful reactions in life have completely stopped can take to krishna consciousness other cannot so very boldly and very clearly it is explained unless and until you have executed some pious acts that is in previous life and got read from sinful reactions of those and if someone is not performing any sinful activities in this life can take krishna consciousness others cannot so this others means what even though they may very be in the mode of a goodness uh, seems to be material mode of goodness or seems to be well behaved well charactered but that's all external show you know but real thing that lord has explained here if someone is not taking up krishna consciousness means some karma need to get burn out make sense yes ma'am without becoming pious no one can come to devotional service it is explained in bhagavad gita that only one who has continuously executed pious activities and whose sinful reactions in life have completely stopped can take to krishna consciousness the neophyte devotees are classified into four stages the distressed those in need of money are the the inquisitive and the wise according to their gradation of pious activities without pious activities if man is in the distressed condition he becomes an agnostic a communist or something like that because he does not firmly believe in god he thinks that he can adjust his distress condition by totally disbelieving in him so they become nastik you know because so many things are happening in my life and god is not in control if he is in control then why i am suffering like this so they become totally faithless you know and they don't believe in god Lord Krishna, however, has explained in the Gita that out of these four types of neophytes, the one who is wise is very dear to him, because a wise man, if he is attached to Krishna, is not seeking an exchange of material benefits. A wise man who becomes attached to Krishna does not want. any return from him either in the form of relieving distress or in gaining money this means that from the very beginning his basic principles of attachment to krishna is more or less love furthermore due to his wisdom and study of shastras he can understand also that krishna is the supreme personality of a godhead any thought about this are you able to understand what propad had said it here mm-hmm.
it's very clear na no? yeah it's clear probably i mean if only a wise man can i mean he doesn't have any material is uh, not seeking anything material benefit from krishna is he, he has some understanding that is kind of gnani see what did you say again a wise man who becomes attached to krishna does not want any returns from him either in gaining money if gnani is there why he will have a desire for money gnani may desire for getting relief from the sufferings that's why they mm. try to get gnana moksha moksha through gnana but here who is attached to krishna he does not have those desires he even does not want that sort of a knowledge he does not want that sort of a uh, financial help aid from him you know it's maybe in the beginning it may seem you, you know but basic principle of his life is more or less he wants to love krishna that's why he does that and furthermore that's his own wisdom and in the association of devotee when he discuss about the scriptures then he understand that krishna is supreme personality of a god you can find there are many people they don't accept krishna as a supreme personality of god but still they love him you know there are many that's why when they see small kid they call him as a hey he is like a krishna you know because krishna the word itself is all attractive and if someone is attractive they think that he is krishna so some other that love is there that's why they call out of that name and that's why they um, get connected with that name you know but when you get really the association of devotees and you read shastra in the association of devotees then that thing gets confirmed make sense yeah it is confirmed in bhagavad gita that after many many births when one becomes actually wise he surrenders unto vasudev knowing perfectly well that krishna that is vasudev is the origin and cause of all causes see the seventh chapter of bhagavad gita prabhupad mostly quoting from that chapter only what is the name of that chapter knowing of the absolute knowledge of the absolute that is gnana yoga so this is the knowledge about the lord lord is speaking about his devotees what are the qualities of devotees what is devotion means and who can take this path who can accept this devotion service who can accept the person esham tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvandva moha nirmukta so what is that dvandva what thing is called as a dwandva duality what is that duality i'm feeling distress happiness that is matra sparshi bhaya and shoka that is the real dwandva you know what is this bhaya and shoka fear for the future, future. and shoka for mm-hmm. the past lamentation so if someone is freed from this they can he live in the present and living in present means rendering devotional service mm-hmm. make sense yes yeah and that's why lord says shoka moha bhaya apagataha the person who is freed from shoka bhaya and moha moha means illusion because of illusion this bhaya and shoka is there and what is that biggest illusion that we have we are the body the material world yeah i am this body what is that verse 230 230 or 330 while studying bhagavad gita no you you were not there you you joined after that no about duality's provision 
No, actually, there's a nice verse. And I think it's a two, not 2 30, it's maybe 3 30. Matras Parshish, No, not Matras Parshish. There, Lord very clearly explains. Let me dig it out. I think it's 3 30 only. Mm, 3.30. Nirashir nir mamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata chwara. Nirashir nir mamo bhutva. See, who can take up this devotional service? And who can have that uh, uh, desire to give, give, give away the things? Give it up. Who can have that sannyasa vritti? Lord says, says there, Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chetasa Nirashir Nirmamo Bhutva Yudhyasya Vigata Jvaraha. You got Bhagavad Gita? I got it. Okay, read that translation. 330, right? Wait, one yeah. minute. Yeah. Wait. 330. Wait. 330. It's chapter Mahi, 7. 330. Chapter 3, text number 30. Mahi Sarvani Karmani Sanyasa Tyatma Chetasa Nirashri Nirmamo Bhutva Yadhyasva Vigata Jvaraha Yudhyasva Therefore, therefore, O Arjuna, surrendering all your works unto me with full knowledge of me, without desires of profit, with no claims to proprietorship, and free from lethargy and lethargy fight. See how one should do devotional service that pleases Krishna. The first thing is Nirashir. He should not have any other desire than serving Krishna. When that happens, if you have the next quality, that is Nirmama. Nirmama means nothing is mine. This body and things related with the body, nothing is related with me, is mine. So if someone is Nirashir, when he becomes uh, material desireless, when he thinks that, he is not this body. Nirashir, Nirmama. And when that should be, he said Vigata Jvaraha. So what is the translation or what is the meaning that Prabhupada gives for that Vigata Jvara? In uh, what he says there? Without being lethargic. Vigata Jvara means getting rid of lethargy. So someone who is free from a lethargy and maintained his consciousness as Nirmama and Nirashir he is sannyasa adhyatma chetasa. He is the person who's, who has a spiritual consciousness. If someone says that I am a spiritual person because I am practicing spirituality in life. Practicing spirituality in life means carrying a mindset that is adhyatma chetasa. So what, what is that mindset? Nirashir, Niramama and Vigata Jvara who is freed from lethargy Performing devotional service with the mindset of nothing is mine and I don't have any other reason. So person with this consciousness can render devotional service. Make sense? Yes, sir. Why I was explaining this? What was the connection? I mean, who takes up devotional service in that connection? See, here Prabhupada says that Bhagavad Gita confirms that after many, many births, when a one becomes actually wise, what is meant by wise? If someone has this sort of a consciousness, that person can be called as a wise. And then that person will surrender unto Vasudev. 
knowing perfectly that Krishna is Vasudev and is the origin of all causes. Therefore, he seeks to the lotus feet of Krishna and gradually develops love for him. Although such a wise man is very dear to Krishna, the other are also accepted are very magnanimous. As a very magnanimous because even though they are distressed or in need of money, they have come to Krishna for satisfaction. Thus, they are accepted as a liberal, broad-minded Mahatmas. Without being elevated to the position of a Jnani or wise man, one cannot stick to the principle of worshipping the Supreme Personality of a God. The less intelligent or those whose intelligence has been taken away by the spell of Maya are attached to different demigods on account of the influence of the most of nature. The wise man is he who has thoroughly understood that he is spirit soul and not simply a body. Because he realizes that he is spirit and Krishna is the supreme spirit. He knows that his intimate relationship should be with Krishna. Not with this body. Okay. The distressed and the man in want of money are in the material concept of life because distress and need of money are both in relationship with this body. One who is inquisitive may be a little above the distress and the man in the need of money. But still he is on the material platform. But a wise man who seeks Krishna knows perfectly well that he is spirit soul or a Brahman and Krishna is the supreme spirit soul or Parabrahman. He knows that the spirit soul being subordinate and finite should always dovetail himself with the infinite supreme soul, Krishna. That is the relationship of the wise man with Krishna. So that's why I was explaining this 3.30. Mai Sarvani Karmani Sanyasya Adhyatma Chetasa. When someone gives up all the activities for the sake of Krishna, he is Adhyatma Chetasa. And when he becomes Nirashir Nirmama Bhutva, when he becomes like that, then Vigata Jwara, he becomes free from lethargy. And then he renders the ocean. He becomes wise and engages himself in the service of the Lord. It can be concluded that a person who is freed from the bodily concept of life is an eligible candidate for pure devotional service. It is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that uh, after Brahman realization, when one is freed from material anxieties and can see every living entity, one can one and an equal level, he is eligible to enter into the devotional service. So, as stated before, there are three kinds of happiness. What are those? Anybody remembers? Uh, material happiness, number one. Mm. Uh, spiritual happiness, but mm. then uh, devotional service. Yes, exactly. Vishaya, Vishaya Ananda, second is Brahmananda, and third is Ishvara. Devotional service and the happiness due to the execution. are not possible as long as one is materially affected. If someone has a desire for material enjoyment 
or for becoming one with the Supreme, these are both considered material concepts because the impersonalist cannot appreciate the spiritual happiness of association and exchange of loving service with the Supreme Personality of a Godhead. Their ultimate goal is to become one with the Lord. This concept is a simply extension of the material idea. In the material world, everyone is trying to be the topmost head among all his fellow men or neighbors, either communally, socially or nationally. Everyone is competing to be greater than all others in the material concept of life. This greatness can be extended to the unlimited so that one actually wants to become one with the greatest of all. The Supreme Lord. This is also a material concept, although maybe a little more advanced. See, that's why Prabhupada is condemning Mayavadi so much. He is not condemning them for their spiritual practices or their sadhana. He is condemning for their concept, you know. Even though it may seem to be a spiritual only concept, you know, like a Oh, he is practicing spirituality, doing so much of austerity, giving up all material desires for sense gratification. But he has a greatest desire to become one with the Lord, to become, become a top. Why? Because if I become Lord, then I will be free from all these sufferings. So Prabhupada says that's this last snare of Maya. This is how Maya can affect someone, you know. However, the perfect spiritual concept of life is complete knowledge of one's constitutional position in which one knows even to dovetail himself in the transcendental living service of the Lord. Jivera Swarupa Krishna Ranitya Das, you know. One must know that he is finite and that the Lord is infinite. Thus, it is not possible to actually become one with the Lord even if one aspires for this. It is simply not possible. Therefore, anyone who has a, any desire or aspiration for satisfying his senses by becoming more and more important, either in the material sense or in the spiritual sense, cannot actually relish the really sweet taste of devotional service. Say, Guru Maharaj used to say, people want to become in the light, the limelight, you know. They want to be prominent. So limelight means on the black stage, when they put that light, focusing on one particular person to show his importance on the stage, so same that that's called as a limelight. So everyone wants to be in the limelight, you know. They try work hard, whether in the material life, whether in the spiritual life. But Guru Maharaj once said that lime is what? What's the nature of lime? How it tests? What's the test of lime? Huh? Sour. Sour. So, when someone comes into limelight, means he gets that sourness. People can't tolerate, you know. For a little bit, it's okay then. But too much of lime, you can't have it, you know. And that's why when we get initiation, we are entitled. What's your name, bro? What name you got? Raseshwar Krishna Das. Raseshwar Krishna Das. Das. They make sure that you become Dasa. And Dasa is never in limelight, you know. Boss is in the always limelight. And that boss is Raseshwar Krishna. Mm. But we try to become Raseshwar Krishna. We forget about Dasa. <laughs> 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 that is what coming in limelight. But Prabhuji, that is not the case with Mataji and Prabhuji. 
they are really awesome <laughs> that's true because they have that uh, they have that simplicity and humbleness uh, that, no, no mata ji no no glorification <laughs> that's the prime qualification to take up devotional service you know yes and that's why shila rupa goswami has compared possessing this bhakti that is material and attaining this mukti liberation desires with being influenced by the black art of a witch so maya is considered as a witch here bhakti mukti spruha you know bhakti means material enjoyment and mukti means to become one with the lord these desires are compared to being haunted by ghosts and witches because while these aspirations for material enjoyment or a spiritual oneness with the supreme remain no one can relish the actual transcendental test of devotional service that's why it is said bhakti mukti kami sakale ashant krishna bhakt nishkam ateva shant krishna bhakta who is nishkam freed from all material desires whether it is a spiritual or whether it is a material he is freed from that and that's why he is shant he is peaceful and that's why you can see most of the elevated personalities when you look at them you find that transcendental peace and that's why we go and take their shelter you know otherwise there are some personality you look at and they look at them and you will see oh my god why is so tense huh what is his problem but same time when you look at the spiritual personality who is really practicing the spirituality in his life you always become happy you know looking at them why because they have that capacity to distribute what they have so they give more and more peace formulas and peace to others who have come in contact with them and the people who are having anxieties by looking at themselves people get anxiety get, go into anxiety oh this person has come you know so devotee means like bhakti vinod thakur used to say the devotee means by looking at him one can understand or one can remember krishna so that is devotee because a pure devotee never cares for liberation lord chaitanya he prayed to krishna my dear son of nanda i do not want any material happiness in the shape of many followers nor immense opulences in wealth nor any beautiful wife nor do i want cessation from material existence i may take birth many times one after another but what i pray from you is that my devotion unto you may always remain unflinching what is the verse for this nadanam na janam na sundari say it for nadanam na janam na sundari kavita me bavam putu my goodness <laughs> चैतन्य शिक्षा अष्टक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ अवर गौड़ी आज यू ना जनम न सुंदरी कविता मे जगदीश काम प्रहलाद so whatever bound i'm bound to get whatever this body provides you know what kind of a happiness what kind of a sufferings i'm going to get because of this body i'm going to get it 
he is fixed upon that deha yogena dehinat yadavad labate sukha dukha ayatnata we don't endeavor to get uh, to put ourselves into the sorrows you know but still we get that sorrow because deha yogena because of this body this body is supposed to give you so you are going to get it he is fixed upon that that's why he says i am not worried about that but my lord give me your devotion sir because whatever material that's going to put me in some or other in some kind of a soup you know and the attention of a pure devotee is so much attracted to the glorification of lord's past times name qualities forms etc that the devotee does not care for mukti shri bilva mangal thakur was said if i am engaged in devotional service unto you my dear lord then very easily can i perceive your presence everywhere and as far as liberation is concerned i think liberation stands at the door with a folded hands waiting for waiting to serve me this is very wonderful words you know he says that mukti she comes and stands at the door desiring that let me serve the devotee because devotees are not at all interested i'm just looking for that verse it's very wonderful uh hmm भुक्ति मुक्ति यावत पिशाचि वर्तते तावत भक्ति सुखस्यात्र कथम सो हियर ही सेज दैट फर्स्ट थिंग दैट इफ समवन हैज अ डिजायर फॉर भोगा डिजायर फॉर लिब्रेशन एंड अदर डिजायर विच आर लाइक अ पिशाची लाइक अ विच एस इफ दे आर देन द हार्ट यू कॉन्ट एंजॉय रियल हैपीनेस ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस तत्रापीच विशेषेण गति भक्ति मन प्राण प्रेम he is explaining to his wife uh, his uh, mother devavati he says naikatmatam me spriyanti kechit matpad seva virata madiha ye anyo anyato bhagavata prasaya sabha jayante mama paurushani the devotees who are engaged in my service and my glorification they desire nothing and even sometimes it's me who is going to offer them salokya sarshi samipya sarupya ekatvam apitu diyamanan na grahanti vina mat sevana jana sometimes it's me by seeing their endeavor i try to give them this five kinds of liberation salokya sarshi samipya sarupya and ekatvam that is one is brahma sayuja diyamanam na grananti even if i try to give them but they don't want that but what they want mat sevanam they want my service you know nothing else so this is what the consciousness and that's why like a like that's why like a devotee is like a bilva mangal thakur this is this liberation oh she is like a kinkara you know the word kinkara see this uh, sanskrit language is so wonderful kim kara means kim kuru iti pruchyate sa the one who with a folded hands always stands at your doorstep and ask what is next what should i do now that is kim kara so if someone renders devotional service to the lord then the liberation all these muktis they come at the doorstep and they ask 
the devotee what should i do for you now that's the glory of the devotional service of the lord so we will stop here and again we will rejoin after 5 minutes okay okay with the same link you can try okay okay